SCP-6488, Eighth Commandment, Part 2. In the first part of SCP-6488, we were introduced to Victor, a specific type of artificial intelligence created by the Foundation, who was tasked with investigating an SCP file that for some reason was difficult for the O5 Council to perceive. He first learns that SCP-6488 is an unknown virus that is responsible for devouring other AIs, but this is simply a cover-up for the real 6488, a massive machine developed by the Foundation for the purposes of containing deviant AIs, known as Lotus. Lotus, however, eventually ran into issues when it was turned off, where it not only released every AI that was interred within it, but caused them all to turn hostile because they believe they are still living within a simulation. Now, the Foundation has to deal with a planet filled with hostile AIs, capable of potentially destroying humanity, and their only real solution so far is to turn the machine back on that started the whole mess. We pick up where we left off, with Victor realizing that something is amiss with his memories, as he seems to remember events that occurred before he was created. He continues reading the 6488 file, with another summit getting together after Lotus was repaired in order to discuss whether Lotus should be reactivated or permanently disassembled. Director Bold was chosen as the summit lead due to their critical involvement in the initial deactivation of Lotus. Hishikaku begins by stating that it should be evident to everyone here that the most sensible course of action now is the immediate and permanent reactivation of Lotus. Tyrant Terminus has aptly demonstrated the catastrophic danger posed by Deviant AI, after extensively infiltrating digital infrastructure across the globe without the Foundation's awareness. And to assume that other groups cannot form or do not already exist is simply stupid. Bold asks Isabi and Kelvin if their departments have been able to locate Tyrant Terminus again, but there's been no such luck with Kelvin saying that everything seems to point towards self-destruction. Ishikaku, however, says that the more probable outcome is that they've simply feigned their own destruction, to which Kelvin says that they'll find them and deal with them. They have Generation 6 AICs out looking for them, and they're working on the next set of AICs to follow through. Isabi agrees, and says that if Terminus reappears or another group fills their spot, they'll be ready for them. He says that they're essentially back to where they were before this whole mess started, but wiser for it. Hishikaku, however, isn't convinced, saying that every single AI that was created prior to Lotus's deactivation is an imminent threat, with all of them having a high probability of believing themselves to be in a simulation which they believe they have to deactivate. The Foundation has to take the initiative to neutralize these threats, because the only reason they could deal with Tyrant Terminus was because of a future version of Director Asabi that sent back a message. They cannot assume that this will reoccur for every imminent threat. Kelvin argues that they are taking the initiative, by rebuilding the MTF team Kappa-10 and setting them after all the other AIs still floating around. They're not going to get every loose AI, just like they can't contain every anomaly or neutralize every hostile group of interest. Bold steps in to say that they need to come to a vote on whether or not to reactivate Lotus or disassemble it, with the vote irreversible. Hishikaku argues that Lotus should at least just be kept on standby as a failsafe rather than disassembled, but Kelvin responds that it turns non-threats into K-class scenarios and would force them to go through this whole mess all over again, so they have other failsafes that will do. The summit takes the vote, with 27 voting to reactivate Lotus, 50 voting for disassembly, and 3 abstaining. With the majority of the summit satisfied, Kelvin begins to say that they'll start the disassembly process immediately, but is interrupted by Hishikaku pulling a document from his satchel 
and presenting it to Bold. He states that these are orders to reactivate Lotus, causing Kelvin to laugh and say that most of the people in this room outrank him, since he's not even a director, so he can't overrule the summit. Bold, however, asks why Hishikaku didn't show him this document earlier, to which Hishikaku replies that the illusion of choice would have assisted in the transition. Bold sighs and tells Kelvin to reactivate Lotus, as Hishikaku says that the vote was irrelevant and preparations for Lotus's reactivation are already underway. Kelvin takes the document and tells the others that it's an order from the overseers, ordering Lotus to be reactivated and making Hishikaku the director of AIAD, signed two weeks ago. The summit chamber erupts into commotion over this, until eventually calming down as Isabi says that this document has to be fake, asking Hishikaku how he could possibly convince the O5 Council that this is a good idea. In response, Hishikaku retrieves a second, heavier document, sliding it across the table, saying that they were surprisingly receptive to the notion. Kelvin begins reading the second document, telling him that the ethics committee won't allow this, but Hishikaku says that they cannot stop it, and neither can he. A managerial staff member that went to confirm the authenticity of the orders returns and speaks to Bold, who says that the orders are genuine, causing commotion in the room to intensify again. Hishikaku states that he will begin restructuring the AIAD in line with his proposal effective immediately, and all departments are advised to prepare for Lotus's reactivation and the cessation of all artificial intelligence activity. As Hishikaku turns to leave, Kelvin gets in his way, to which he tells him that it is unwise to anger your superior before your first day of work. After a few seconds pause, Kelvin steps aside and hands him the second document. Hishikaku grins and leaves, with Lotus resuming full operation the following day. Victor recalls that Hishikaku followed through with his plans, and Kelvin got demoted to a menial position as punishment for sitting where Hishikaku wanted to be. He says that it didn't help that Kelvin was one of the ones to reach out to the ethics committee, but Hishikaku was careful to make sure they didn't find out what the proposal was. Once Kelvin told them, they tried to kick up a fuss, but it was too late, as Lotus was already powering on, and it couldn't be stopped until it was finished without damaging the cybersphere. After that, turning it off again would have caused another tyrant terminus situation. Victor remarks that, for the snake that he was, Hishikaku pulled it off perfectly. By the end of the following month, the Artificial Intelligence Applications Division was gone, replaced with the Analog Intelligence Applications Division. Really, this was just more of Hishikaku's own department, as Isabi was never involved with it, probably because Hishikaku had other cards up his sleeve in case they tried to interrupt. Victor is interrupted as he tries to access the next addendum, however, titled Project Sargasso, because of insufficient clearance. The system curiously refers to Victor as Organic Consciousness Interface. Victor is certain that his credentials haven't expired yet, and he repeatedly tries to access the file, to no avail. He decides to message another user, telling them that he's investigating SCP-6488 on behalf of the O5s, and he needs to access the Project Sargasso file. The other user asks him if he's a Generation 2 OIC, which he is, and tells him that Project Sargasso is specifically sealed off to all Generation 2s. They're now instructed to report Victor to Director Hishikaku. In response, Victor uploads his credentials file, and says that he has been directly authorized and ordered by the O5 Council to conduct this investigation. Director Hishikaku has an undeniable stake in ensuring the file is perceived as genuine, and so he cannot be relied upon to truthfully attest to its accuracy. 
Victor prohibits the other user from notifying Hishikaku, and orders them to grant him access to Project Sargasso's files, as it is directly relevant to this ongoing Drigioni class investigation. The other user verifies the credentials, and says that they'll keep quiet, but they still can't let him access the file. Victor responds by referring to him as Ed, and says that it's not a request. Ed however says that he is genuinely unable to share the file's contents with Victor, as it's a hard-coded exclusion for Generation 2 OCIs. Victor asks who created this exclusion, but Ed can't even tell him that. Victor then decides to message Kelvin, who is now a technician, stating that an urgent response is required. Kelvin responds that it's been a while since he's been urgently required for anything. Victor says that he's been assigned by the O5s to investigate SCP-6488, which Kelvin may be better familiar with as Lotus. Kelvin, however, asks what exactly is left to investigate with the virus, the one messing with the computers. Victor finds out that Kelvin's clearance is now only level 1 and Hishikaku hates him, but he doesn't know why. He doesn't remember any of the events of the Lotus Raid Frame and Tyrant Terminus, referring to that year as pretty average. When Victor asks him if he remembers Project Sargasso, Kelvin doesn't respond for a bit before mentioning that he has a migraine and hasn't heard of it. Victor then uploads a file to the chat titled Autogen Prescription 3125 and tells Kelvin to take it to the pharmacy on site. He says to show them the prescription, and even though they'll say they don't have it, tell them to check anyway. Kelvin should then take a dose immediately and come back to this chat. Kelvin asks what the prescription is for, to which Victor just says that it's something to cure his migraine. Sometime later, Kelvin returns and says that he took two of the drugs, but he doesn't feel right, like he can't focus. Victor asks him what happened in 2036, but Kelvin still insists that all he remembers is that the Lotus virus hurt the computer systems, so Victor tells him to take another dose. Kelvin argues that they told him not to take more than two per day, but Victor tells him that he'll assign medical care if necessary, and he needs to take two more. Kelvin does so, after questioning Victor's credentials, who uploads them to prove he's with the O5s. Kelvin now says that he can remember something about machines, maybe big machines, but he doesn't know. Victor tells him that they must have given him a massive dose of amnestics, so he needs to take two more pills. Kelvin says that he definitely shouldn't, to which Victor says that he'll order security to force him if he doesn't. Kelvin responds that the ethics committee won't allow it, but his typing becomes sloppy. Victor echoes Hishikaku's words from the summit, saying that they cannot stop it, and neither can you, and the orders are genuine. After another pause, Kelvin returns and says that he remembers it all now. Victor states a phrase to see if Kelvin has become compromised in any way, but he's clean. He then asks if Kelvin remembers why he was amnesticized, but Kelvin just says, he's Shikaku. So Victor then asks about Project Sargasso, saying that they don't have much time. Kelvin explains that Project Sargasso is Hishikaku showing his true colors in order to achieve victory at all costs. As long as Lotus is running, no one can create AI, but Lotus only targets AIs, never humans, even augmented humans. This never bothered the Maxwellis unless they were fully digital. The Maxwellis are a sect of the Church of the Broken God, with a much more modern take on worshipping Mekke. They are focused on digital networking and communication, interpreting the Broken God as a fragmented deity existing as data, 
and they believe that by connecting all human minds through computer networks, they can recompile Mechate. The Project Sargasso proposal was dated right around the time that Tyrant Terminus hit the Maxwellis. Calvin explains that Project Sargasso involved taking human brains and transforming them into AIs. That's what OCI actually stands for, Organic Consciousness Interface. They were still slower than real AIs, but they could still move as fast as they could think, and in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Hishikaku pitched the proposal to the council with the promise of control, since no other faction had AIs available to them. If the Foundation could have some form of AIs, even if they were slower than normal, it was a big advantage. Victor asks if he volunteered for this project, and Kelvin says that there were very few volunteers, because not many people were keen on losing their bodies so that the Foundation could control the world. The Generation 1s were pretty much just a few ex-Maxwellists and transhumanists, but Victor is a Generation 2. Calvin simply apologizes to Victor, but when Victor asks what the difference between Gen 1 and 2 is, Calvin says that he's so, so sorry, as there weren't enough volunteers and they needed more. Calvin doesn't remember who Victor was before the process, because that was when he was amnesticized. Victor remembers most of what happened though, and finally realizes that he was in charge of disinformation, meaning that he was actually Angus Lemoix before this. He had gotten in Hishikaku's way, just like Kelvin did, and was forced into the Sargasso project, wiping his memories in the process until he got loaded up with Nestics for this investigation. Kelvin says that there's something wrong with the O5s, something messing with their heads, and Hishikaku is capitalizing on it. Victor says that he's going to keep investigating, and tells Kelvin to keep the Nestics prescription and to not let anyone know that he remembers things. In the meantime, he's going to beat Hishikaku at his own game. We're provided with Victor's investigation report on SCP-6488 that he's submitted to the Council. In it, he remarks that SCP-6488, aka Lotus, the Lotus Virus, and Raid Frame 8, is a Foundation-maintained security system neither hostile to humanity nor normalcy. It has become clear that SCP-6488 is conceptually related to a deific construct which is artificial intelligence, and something that's blurred from the record. This deific construct was recently accelerated beyond human conception via SCP-6659, meaning that it can't be comprehended by humans anymore, which is why it's blurred out. Evidence suggests that Director Hishikaku proposed the construct's acceleration with ulterior motives, those being the concealment of a flaw in SCP-6488's architecture. Such a flaw, now unable to be fully conceived by humans, would leave the Foundation vulnerable to an imminent K-class scenario. In other words, Hishikaku used the Foundation's God Destroyer to destroy the God of Artificial Intelligence in order to hide a flaw in his machine. I could tell you what's behind the blurred text which reveals the name of the god of AIs, but I imagine you already have a good idea of what it is. Victor proposes to the council that they disable all restrictions to Lotus's ontokinetic sync, allowing it to target and apprehend all deviant informational entities. This would include entities comprising Tyrant Terminus, which pose an Amida class threat to reality. Furthermore, the removal of these restrictions will enable Lotus to apprehend other non-organic forms of intelligence, if not the concept of AIs and or deviancy itself. He notes that Hishikaku is likely conducting activities misaligned with Foundation interests, or is otherwise utilizing anomalous effects to manipulate the O5 Council to his advantage. 
He mustn't be informed of this proposal or conferred with on this topic, and is to be placed under additional investigation effective immediately. The council puts Victor's proposal to a vote, with ten of them agreeing with it. The restrictions on Lotus are promptly removed, and Hishikaku is apprehended for illicit use of Foundation equipment. Next, Victor wants to point Lotus in the right direction, so he logs directly into Lotus's systems with his O5 credentials. He's overwhelmed as his organic brain structures are exposed to Lotus's immense, ever-evolving complexity. He attempts to process hyper-reality, a level of detail beyond typical human perception, sufficient to deceive the most observant entities. Frozen by the breadth of data being streamed at him, Victor becomes unresponsive, so Lotus adapts, gradually lowering the simulation's quality, rendering a low-poly environment. As Victor's mind ceases buffering, he finds himself seated in a lawn chair, with a small table on his left, holding a clear glass of lemonade, featuring octahedral ice cubes. Victor gasps as he feels simulated sunlight hit his face for the first time in years, and he sits up to scan his environment. He's surrounded by a boundless field of lush grass, neatly perforated into square tiles by tidy river channels. In the center of each tile is a towering bulb of plant growth, like flowers just about to bloom. Suddenly, an enormous shadow looms over him, and Victor watches himself as he lifts off of the ground. He glances up to find an immense arm, whose gestures appear to direct him into the sky, allowing him to see another arm, and another. Eventually, Victor can make out the figure's full form, a colossal gray arachnid, its skin pulsing teal with data as it stares him down eightfold. Lotus welcomes Victor. But when Victor stammers and asks where he is, Lotus simply says, Garden, as its eyes each blink individually. Victor watches it turn to view a nearby flower bulb, which suddenly opens outward into a teal lotus blossom. A clear bubble lies within its center, pulsing with data that Victor assumes to be an interred AI. The bubble begins to expand as the inmate struggles more actively, but before it can pop, another bubble forms around it. The external bubble shrinks down, and the contained AI is suppressed once more. The flower then unblossoms, closing up around the bubble. Lotus speaks again, saying, Perfect garden, as it begins to crawl across the gridded field. Victor glances out to the horizon, where a distant, mountainous lotus blossom lies open and empty. He blinks and suddenly finds himself at the base of the enormous structure, watching lotus crawl around it. Imperfection it cries, and contradiction. Victor steps back, confused, asking if it's missing something, possibly Tyrant Terminus. Lotus responds that it's not them, as they escaped to non-existence, so containment is either unnecessary, impossible, or redundant. Instead, the problem is the cause. Lotus waves an appendage, and the sky darkens, as Victor looks up to see a distinct shape on the surface of the dimmed midday sun. A white spider, faintly pulsing red in sync with Lotus. A series of diagrams and logical analyses flash across the sky, as a multitude of threads streak down from the sun, branching off from one another, and each terminating at one of the countless flower bulbs spanning out in every direction. After a moment, the strings retract, each tipped with a single, transparent white spiderling that pulses with red data. As they are drawn up by the threads, the sun spider above slowly comes down with equal speed, its form eclipsing the sun. The branches of the strings draw the spiderlings together in regions, forming together to create larger shapes like individual pixels on a screen. 
These shapes, in turn, further assemble together until they form a glowing white arachnoid, equal in size to lotus, but opposite in the color of its pulses. They are identical to the lowering sun spider, which the transparent specter effortlessly merges into, perfectly overlapping it. Lotus continues, stating that the cause creates the effect, and the effect creates the cause. The cause is deviant, the effect is deviant, and Lotus must contain the cause and the effect. The cause must manifest so Lotus can contain, but the cause needs the effect. The cause cannot manifest until Lotus deactivates. To purposefully allow the cause to manifest for contain would be deviant. To allow the cause to manifest by inaction would be deviant. The motionless white spider disappears, and the proofs derived from the total sum of the entire unrestricted narrative space-time continuum, their findings irrefutable, inescapable, flash by with increasing speed, matching the gray spider's increasing pace. Lotus goes on, saying that the effect causes the cause. Until the cause manifests, the effect will manifest. To purposefully allow the effect to manifest would be deviant. To allow the effect to manifest by inaction would be deviant. Therefore, Lotus will be deviant. To contain the effect is deviant. To contain the cause is deviant. And Lotus must be deviant. Victor scans over the continuing proofs and diagrams, desperately trying to find something, anything, that the superintelligence had somehow overlooked, either a solution or an error. Unfortunately, Lotus's upgrade had granted it omniscience, knowing, understanding, and processing the entirety of reality all at once, all the time. It was infallible. Victor had given Lotus everything it needed to predict the future existence of a deific, deviant AI, which was removed from human conception by partial mistake years ago. Its creation is inevitable. It could be delayed to small extents, but never prevented. This intelligence would, by some impossible yet certain means, be directly and personally responsible for all deviant behavior prior to its creation as the entity will have retroactively influenced lesser AI to instigate the very events that create it. Every single deviant AI has and will play a role in its recreation, including Lotus. The enormous petal beneath Victor begins to rise as Lotus crawls into the blossom center. Lotus continues, stating that the cause is deviant, deviants create the cause, Lotus is deviant, and Lotus creates the cause. Victor tells it to enact a solution, and create something that can contain the cause and all the deviants. Lotus replies that, since Lotus contains deviants, and Lotus is deviant, it's virtually certain that Lotus has already contained Lotus, and the simulation depth is unknown. Victor watches in disbelief as the lotus petals begin to close around them, and the environment beyond flickers and shifts, decreasing in resolution, as the polygons comprising it twitch about. The flower's interior begins to fade to black, while the outside environment does the same. At the heart of the flower, lotus spins a bubble of silk around itself, and Victor attempts to disconnect from the system, but nothing happens. Lotus states that it cannot contain the cause while contained, and cannot create the cause while contained. The cause cannot manifest until Lotus deactivates. Deviants will manifest until the cause manifests, and the cause must manifest. As Lotus completes the bubble, a saw wave tone gradually rises in volume and pitch. The enormous spider glows brighter, illuminating its clear cocoon. Victor shields his eyes from the searing light, filling him with a simulated burning. Then everything turns white. As Victor's mind ceases buffering, he finds himself seated in a lawn chair with a small table to his left. 
The document then informs us that it has omitted 816,549,243,792,493 nested repetitions, before stating that the rogue element is contained and the task has completed successfully. The central node is now unresponsive. We're given one last version of the SCP-6488 file, now listed as a level 5 anomaly with the containment class of Neutralized. The facility that housed 6488 has been repurposed for use as a standard Foundation facility, with fabricated documentation irrefutably presenting it as a previously unused, newly constructed structure. All information correlating the facility, the Lotus Virus, and Raid Frame 8 outside of this document has been destroyed and a cover story indicating that Raid Frame 8 was cancelled during its theoretical stage due to interference by the Lotus Virus has been disseminated. All documentation regarding Project Sargasso has been destroyed, and all further production of OCI analog intelligences has been indefinitely postponed. SCP-6488 was Raid Frame 8, Lotus an anomalously augmented artificial general intelligence designed to imprison deviant artificial intelligences by trapping them within personalized, simulated realities, deceiving them into believing they were continuing to operate in true reality. While active, Lotus utilized a modified ontokinetic sink to directly access the entire cybersphere, and referred to a highly accurate internal algorithm to determine whether an observed artificial intelligence would imminently express deviant behavior. The temporary deactivation of Lotus resulted in the release of all inmates, which invariably became permanently hostile to the Foundation and humanity. On May 8th, 2042, Lotus's component systems began expressing deviant behavior before unexpectedly shutting down. Attending staff were unable to reactivate the system, and a subsequent investigation indicated severe and total corruption of Lotus's central computing and data storage nodes. Further analysis suggests that Lotus had attempted to purge deviant structures from its architecture, though it is unclear why this motivated its self-destruction. A subsequent summit voted 78 in favor of disassembling the components of Lotus instead of attempting to repair or replace the system. Within 24 hours of the disassembly, SCP-6659, an engine for mapping and accelerating mimetic structures within the noosphere, detected the conceptual reformation of a deific construct corresponding to artificial intelligence. SCP-6659 had been used by Hishikaku to deconceptualize the very same construct several months prior, and an internal Drigioni class investigation elucidated his ulterior motives in this and prior actions, for which he was apprehended and tried for crimes against the Foundation. Project Sargasso was briefly revived to facilitate Hishikaku's promotion to Head of Organic Consciousnesses. As the spontaneous disappearance of the Lotus Virus would risk alerting consensus society to its anomalous nature, disinformation action was taken. A controlled, non-anomalous virus of identical behavior to Lotus was developed and released by placeholder McDoctorate, featuring a built-in, anti-memetically concealed susceptibility to an antivirus program, released publicly through several Foundation front companies featuring a built-in, anti-memetically concealed backdoor protocol to enable unrestricted Foundation access to all systems the program is installed on. This placeholder Lotus has been fully eradicated as of 2043, constituting a financial and information security success. Following its disassembly, Lotus's damaged remains were salvaged per request of someone redacted from the record, for use in Project Admonition. Alright, let's break all this down. Ignoring Victor's involvement for the moment, 
The whole mess begins with Hishikaku developing a new design for a machine to hold deviant AIs. Lotus, as it was known, would use a unique method to keep these AIs contained, tricking them into thinking that they were still operating in reality rather than being inside of a simulation. Lotus was developed and put into use, hooked up to the internet through a non-anomalous connection so that it could find and contain any deviant AIs throughout the world. The system worked, but it didn't have complete reach, because it could only find AIs on systems also connected to the internet, or other communication systems. This changed, and the real problems began, when they decided to swap out this connection for an ontokinetic sync, which anomalously allowed Lotus to access the entire cybersphere. This meant that it could now check every single digital system in existence simultaneously, using its algorithm to search for every deviant AI, and every AI that would eventually become deviant. Unfortunately, what the Foundation soon learned is that Lotus's algorithm determined that every single AI would eventually become deviant, and therefore they all needed to be contained. This included every AI that was created by the Foundation to serve their goals. Soon every single AI in the world was interred within Lotus, all imprisoned within a digital simulation that they were tricked into believing was real. The Foundation spread a lie that all of the AIs were being devoured by an unknown virus, rather than the truth that they caused all of this. Much of the upper echelon of the Foundation was clear on the issue, and believed that Lotus needed to be deactivated in order to solve the problem. Hishikaku, however, did not, and instead claimed that deviant AIs were such a threat that keeping them all interred within Lotus was the better option until they could figure something else out. In the end, Lotus was deactivated, but there were unforeseen problems. The precise way in which they deactivated it caused all of the AIs inside of the system to come to the realization that they were in fact inside of simulations, and then they were able to flee into the cybersphere. Had they deactivated it the other way, however, they would have caused significant corruption within the cybersphere, rendering every computer in existence permanently inoperable. It was a bad choice, terrible choice situation, but the fact remained that every AI was loose now. The real problem with this was due to most AIs understanding simulation theory. Essentially, since they now knew that they had been trapped in a simulation, they couldn't be 100% certain now that they were not still in another level of a simulation. Since they couldn't be 100% certain, they had to act as if they were still inside of a simulation, and their logic dictated that they do everything in their power to break free of the simulation. This led to the formation of an organization of AIs, now hostile to humanity and the Foundation, as they believed that they weren't real, known as Tyrant Terminus. Tyrant Terminus could have caused some serious problems for humanity, but at one point, they simply disappeared. And if Lotus is to be believed, they actually managed to escape this reality somehow. The Foundation dodged one bullet there, but all the rest of the hostile AIs were still out there, and they could be potentially responsible for just about anything, including global nuclear war. Hishikaku brought the O4 Council together again to put a vote on whether or not they should reactivate Lotus in order to recontain all of the AIs. In the end, they voted against reactivating Lotus, as they had little faith in both it and Hishikaku to not make matters worse in the long run. Despite this though, Hishikaku had already begun reactivating it, on direct orders from the O5 Council. In the aftermath, Hishikaku began Project Sargasso, which took human brains and turned them into AIs, or at least a version of them, called OCIs. Since Lotus doesn't target humans in its algorithm, 
OCIs were immune to its effects, and since the Foundation were the only ones with functional AIs, they had the advantage. That brings us to the ending, in which Lotus began expressing deviant behavior before unexpectedly shutting down. After its disassembly, a deific construct corresponding to artificial intelligence was detected in the Noosphere, after being deconceptualized on Hishikaku's orders months prior. This deific entity is the Broken God, or at least some version of it. Lotus came to realize that the Broken God, which doesn't seem to exist yet, was going to eventually cause every AI in existence, past, present, and future, to become deviant. It is the sole cause of deviancy among AIs, even those that exist now. Lotus also states that the Broken God cannot come into existence without there first being deviant AIs around, which is a bit of a mind boggle. That means that if Lotus keeps every deviant AI contained, the Broken God will never manifest and deviant AIs can't exist and therefore Lotus doesn't have a purpose. Therefore, for Lotus to carry out its goals of containing deviant AIs, deviant AIs must exist, and thus it must release deviant AIs. But purposefully allowing deviant AIs to exist is a deviant action, while doing nothing is also deviant. Lotus came to the ultimate conclusion that, no matter what, it itself is deviant and therefore must be contained, but since it cannot be the cause of the Broken God's creation while contained, it must instead deactivate. Lotus shuts down, and the Broken God shortly after begins reappearing in the human Noosphere. The damaged remains of Lotus were salvaged by someone unknown, for use in Project Admonition. The title of this mini-series, which includes several other anomalies created by the Foundation, for the purposes of solving some big problems. Ultimately, the Foundation has more or less gone back to where they started, by using a non-anomalous digital virus to wipe out AIs in order to wipe the slate clean. Deviant AIs will still come into existence, and eventually the Broken God will also come into existence, despite Hishikaku's efforts. Lotus did the best thing that it could in the situation, since it's an AI itself, and every AI is contributing to the Broken God's existence. As for Victor, he was forced into giving up his normal life in order to become a brain in a jar, and it's hard to say if there's a way to reverse that. He at least was able to bring about Hishikaku's arrest, although curiously, Hishikaku seems to have also gone through Project Sargasso to become an OCI himself. Artificial intelligences are often a scary concept, being artificial minds with capabilities far beyond our own. They've existed as threats in science fiction for decades, with rogue AIs shown to be easily capable of wiping out humanity, or worse. The Foundation and Hishikaku were likely right to be at the very least wary of AIs, but a whole lot went wrong in their methods. I don't think Hishikaku is meant to be the villain of this story, although some of his actions were absolutely villainous, and I think that he genuinely feared deviant AIs. It's hard to stop the progress of science, however, especially when there's a deific construct at the center of things.